left off last time <coughs> with uh, entropy. So if we remember entropy, if I have a random variable x, then entropy, the entropy of x is equal to um, the sum over all possible x of the probability of that value of x times log 2 of 1 over the probability of x. So it's worth, uh, it's worth noting that this can be rewritten as the expected value or the average of log 2 over p of x. And remember that this quantity, we call this the self-information. And the self-information, if one is encoding a source code, the self-information is, on average, the minimum, um, uh, the minimum number of bits, or excuse me, the maximum, the optimum number of bits that one should assign to each each source letter in X. So we also saw some uh, alternative formulations of entropy. If I have random variables X and Y. HXY is called the joint entropy. Uh, between X and Y. And I can write this as the sum over X and Y of probability of X and Y log 2 to 1 over the probability of X and Y. Now, as uh, we said last time, um, if X and Y are independent, then there's a particular consequence on the joint entropy. What is it? So, uh, think of it this way. H of X is the average uh, minimum length of any description of a random variable in X. H of Y would be the same thing for Y. H of X and Y is, um, that's right, so X, H of X and Y is the joint minimum description of both together. So if they're independent, you can't, um, basically you can't reduce the amount of, uh, of description that you're doing. If you know, in other words, if you know Y, it doesn't tell you anything about X. You know, X, it doesn't tell you anything about Y. So it makes sense that uh, the optimal thing to do would be to just encode them independently because they are independent. So the, the minimum description length of them both together would be this. Just the sum of the two marginal entries. So we, should, we, uh, we showed that last time, but it's not too hard to show yourself because P of X, Y, remember, if they're independent, this is PX, PY, log 2, 1 over PX, PY, that breaks up into log 2, 1 over PX plus log 2, 1 over PY, and that will separate, the, the sum will separate into a term in HX and a term in HY. <coughs> okay, we also saw conditional entropy. Now, uh, 
Uh, intuitively, we should we should think that um, if I know x, then if I know x and x is dependent on y, then on average, uh, I should be able to design a code that's shorter than if I don't know x. So in other words, um, the average length of the code for y uh, without knowing x, so in other words, in ignorance of any outside information, it should be longer than if I know x. So in other words, if I know x, uh, that tells me some that tells me some side information about y, and I should be able to reduce uh, the amount of information I'm using to express y. Thought of another way. Um, one possible code, even if I know x, one possible code is to is to pretend that I don't know x. So if this if this represents the, the average length of the shortest possible code, one option is for the for the encoder to forget about x. So therefore, if this is the shortest possible code, uh, I can either use this or I can do something better. So one would expect that to be true. But, but, uh, we will actually prove that statement rigorously a different way. So now we'll start into the real meat. So up till now, 